Great White is a Bolger and Mabillard inverted coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio. While this may be a common Batman the Ride coaster layout, Great White is still a very enjoyable coaster, and it was also a very significant coaster for the SeaWorld chain as a whole. In fact, it may be the chain's most important roller coaster ever. So in this video, I will review Great White and explain why this coaster helped shape SeaWorld into the parks they are today. When SeaWorld San Antonio originally opened in 1988, it was the only major amusement park in the San Antonio area. The park originally opened with zero rides. A few years later, it was announced that Fiesta Texas would open in 1992, just 20 minutes away from SeaWorld. This would be a major amusement park nestled within a quarry and direct competition for SeaWorld. To compete, SeaWorld decided that they needed to start adding amusement rides. Because of the hot Texas climate, they went with two water rides, the Texas Splashdown Log Flume and the Rio Loco River Rapids ride. Both opened in 1991, a year before Fiesta Texas opened. By the mid-1990s, the only amusement rides in the SeaWorld parks were the aforementioned water rides and some observation rides. In 1996, Fiesta Texas was purchased by Time Warner and rebranded as a Six Flags Park. In response to the blossoming thrill park, SeaWorld San Antonio wanted to add the chain's first roller coaster. Instead of dipping their toes with an affordable family ride, SeaWorld San Antonio went big and bold. In 1997, they opened Great White, a B&M inverted coaster. At an estimated cost of nearly $10 million, this coaster was, at the time, unique to the region. The smooth and forceful ride was very well received by guests. Without the success of Great White, the entire SeaWorld chain may look very different today, as this is the ride that spurred SeaWorld to add other roller coasters to both the San Antonio Park and the chain's other parks. In 1998, SeaWorld Orlando received their first roller coaster in Journey to Atlantis, the Mock Water Coaster. Today, that park has six roller coasters, including three giant B&Ms in Mako, Manta, and Kraken. In 2004, SeaWorld San Diego received their first roller coaster, which was also a journey to Atlantis. The park had more difficulties adding coasters due to the park's strict height restrictions, but today, they have five coasters, including three launch coasters, and a new for 2021 B&M dive machine in Emperor. But back to SeaWorld San Antonio. The park today has six roller coasters, but Great White still fills a significant role in the park's lineup. It is currently the park's only looping coaster. Great White is a Batman the Ride clone. B&M has built 12 inverts worldwide with this layout. When Great White opened, the closest one was four hours north at Six Flags over Texas. However, Six Flags relocated the Batman clone from the closed Six Flags New Orleans to Fiesta, Texas for the 2008 season. This ride was a mirror image of Great White and curiously named Goliath even though it wasn't the tallest ride in the park. So I do find it interesting there are two coasters with near identical layouts just 20 minutes away, and despite both being Batman the Ride clones, these ones are not named Batman the Ride, like a majority of the coasters with this layout are. Along with Great White and Goliath being mirror images of each other, there are subtle differences in the coaster's statistics. Great White is 3 feet taller, has a 1 foot taller drop, and 131 feet or 40 meters less of track. The latter theoretically should make the coaster more compact and forceful, but I don't find that it rides much different than the other Batman clones out there in terms of forces. Great White is located in the back corner of SeaWorld San Antonio. It is probably the furthest coaster from the park's main entrance. For this reason, it's not uncommon to see this coaster open an hour or two after park opening and I have heard stories about this ride being closed for staffing purposes on off-peak days. When Great White opened, the queue line took riders through a shark aquarium. This is a similar setup to what SeaWorld Orlando does with Manta. However, there was no way for non-riders to see the exhibit on Great White without entering the queue line, so the park moved the shark exhibit to the Discovery Point area of SeaWorld San Antonio, and the queue line now takes place entirely outdoors for Great White. I believe the arcade adjacent to the attraction is where the aquarium once was, and I'd love if a local could confirm this. Great White usually runs just one train, and can have slow dispatches, but it's usually still a walk-on. 
The coaster runs the familiar B&M invert trains with the traditional over-the-shoulder restraints. In terms of seat selection, I do not have a major preference on the Batman clones. I think the back has marginally stronger forces, but the view is superior up front, so they're both great. Once dispatched, you climb the 108 foot or 33 meter tall lift hill. You then dip down a brief pre-drop, and then you twist to the left down the ride's 81 foot or 25 meter tall first drop. In the back, you really get whipped down this drop, and everyone gets a solid dose of positive G's on the pullout. That is followed by the first of five inversions, a vertical loop. This element pulls some strong G's, and it's not uncommon for me to start graying out in this element. The second half of the loop has some good snap to it, and then you rock it through a zero G roll. This is my favorite element on the ride, which is the case with most B&M inverts. The zero G roll is incredibly snappy. It is a dizzying spiral that offers ferocious whip and sustained hang time simultaneously. That is followed by a second vertical loop, equally as forceful as the first one. Then comes a very intense upwards helix. The sustained G's in the helix always has the blood rushing to my feet. My legs feel like they'll explode, which just shows the power of this coaster. Great White does slow down momentarily before twisting to the right down a shallow twisting drop. That is followed by the first of two corkscrews. These are technically referred to as wingovers in the Batman clones, but they look like corkscrews to me. Both corkscrews and Great White are very intense. You are really whipped through them. In between the first and second corkscrew, you also have this tight turn that will also get your legs tingling. After the second and final corkscrew, you rise uphill and curve into the brake run, ending the 2,562 foot or 781 meter long coaster. One of the reasons that Great White stats may differ from the other Batman clones is that this invert is more of a terrain coaster. If you look at most Batman clones at the Six Flags parks, the first drop and first vertical loop sit quite a ways above the ground. Those Batman clones only start hugging the ground in the second half. On Great White, the pullouts from every element scrape the ground. The ride was positioned so the second half dipped down a small hill, and that is one advantage this ride has on the other Batman clones. This one is also immaculately smooth after two and a half decades of operation. The ride has no rattle, nor head banging. The only reason this coaster may not be re-rideable is because of how forceful and intense it is. This coaster is fast paced and it gives you barely any time to breathe outside of that brief pause before the final two inversions. So what would I rate Great White? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. I know this is a clone, but it's one of the best clones out there. The ride is glass smooth and features a forceful, action packed layout. I think these Batman clones would get a lot more praise if they hadn't been cloned because it does everything a thrill seeker could want. So I understand why this ride was cloned because of the compact footprint and the ride's popularity. Great White is one of the best Batman clones because of its smoothness and terrain use. The latter is why I prefer it to the nearby Goliath. And I always look forward to taking a few laps in Great White whenever I'm at SeaWorld San Antonio. So those are my thoughts on Great White, the Balger and Mabiar inverted coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio. This again was the coaster that kicked off the coaster spree for the SeaWorld parks. Have you ridden this coaster? How do you think it compares to the other BNM inverts or Batman clones out there? I would love to hear your thoughts on this invert down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.